Hola, mis amigos. Hope you're all doing well today. So I'm here with my dear friend, George, who I've met online. And uh, I just was searching uh, drone, footage, drone video, sorry. And uh, George's channel popped up. He was flying his drone in Edmonton, Alberta on the North Saskatchewan River from his dinghy of all things. So I thought, wow, this guy is pretty crazy. So he's got a really nice uh, DJI drone. So I started watching his video and we started communicating back and forth. And next thing you know, I, me and Jennifer, we invited him to come here because they were coming to Mexico for a holiday. So we said, come stay with us for a week. and we can collaborate and hopefully learn from each other and I know I learned a great deal from George and I hope he learned a great deal from me. <laughs> Absolutely. Good, good, that's awesome. Um, so George has been here for, how long you been here now? Here at your house, a week. One week, but in Mexico? Oh, we came uh, February, actually January 31st, we, we came into Mexico, so we're here about two weeks now. Perfect. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead with our video here. We're going to ask each other some questions, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Hang on tight. Daryl and I have one thing in common. We're both YouTubers, so let's talk about Daryl's channel. Your, your channel name is Two Gringos on the Golf. Can you tell me who that is for? Like, what's their, your audience? Well, when me and Jennifer moved to Mexico, our audience, we thought, would be people who wanted to travel to Mexico, whether they're Canadians, uh, Europeans, Americans, or whatever. And then mainly for people who want to move to Mexico from whatever country they want to move from. Yeah. You know, because there's not a... When I was searching YouTube, I could only find a lot of Americans doing videos here in the U.S. I couldn't find very many Canadians That's that were doing uh, Mexican videos, or videos in Mexico, I should say. <laughs> yeah, I could uh, name a few and then your channel popped up and that's uh, how, how I got acquainted with your videos and what you do. Um, so I have a question for you, George. Uh, what, I, when I started to watch your channel, it was like, as I said, the, the dinghy, the, you know, you're floating down the river. And then I checked out a few more of your videos and I seen you have done some extensive bike tours like in different countries other than Mexico and Canada. So what got you into doing bike tours? Well, a long time ago, like in a different life kind of thing, <laughs> I, I used to be a highway driver, mostly driving in the US. Some, like, I've been through 48 states on a, with a semi. And all you get to see when you're driving a semi is basically the highway, the interstate highway, the truck stop and the industrial park. So with me having started trucking in the first place because I saw it as a way for uh, getting free travel and it worked, it worked. I got free travel and it was a big adventure at first but then I started missing you know, the best parts of it all the time. And then I got inspired by somebody online, it was an online blog that was written by an Australian who uh, cycled from somewhere in the US, I think it was Oregon, all the way to the Mexican border. And he stopped there, but it got me thinking that maybe I can go beyond that. But what would it be like to go to Mexico on a bicycle? And you know, that, that then it just took off from there. Once you start this, guys, bicycle touring is very addictive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like tattoos, very addicting. <laughs> you get one, you want more. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well that's awesome, George. Great. So, uh, do you have anything else you wanted to ask us? Well, us yeah, is in well, me. <laughs> and Jennifer's busy making money in the office there. You moved to Mexico about, I guess, a year and a half ago or so. And um, I'm just curious, what's your favorite thing about living here now that you've been here a while? Oh my God. You know what? It really, <laughs> that's a tough question because so many things are really good here in Mexico. I mean, Mexico, like every other country, has its problems, but I personally believe that the good outweighs the bad here in Mexico. For me, I think it's the food and the weather and the people. The people, the, the, the it's just a more, it's very relaxed here. It's more relaxed lifestyle. The, everyone's super friendly. You know, the weather is always nice. A beautiful summer day, you're in the palm trees, you know. 
And as you know, two gringos on the Gulf, we live on the Gulf Coast, Mexico, so the beach is only a hop, skip, and a jump away. So what's not to love about that? And did I mention the tacos? The tacos are amazing. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> North American tacos are all fake. Yeah. <laughs> Tex makes them count. Yeah, no kidding, eh? <laughs> right, so I'm just going to reach over here. Yeah, there you go. So, now I have another question for you, George. Yeah. Um, what got you into doing YouTube videos? Why Why YouTube? So now you've, you've started the bike tours, yeah. and now you're doing, doing YouTube videos. Was that before you started the bike tours, or kind of at the same time? No, the YouTube actually started after, but the idea of making YouTube videos about the bicycle tour, that really only took off when I uh, took a tour all the way across Canada and I had a little action camera and uh, two other cameras that I had with me. And they weren't the high end or anything like that, but I thought, oh, what if I could make a, a, a capture footage all the way across Canada? But no, I had my, my YouTube channel a little bit before that, and I was actually inspired by other YouTubers, and I was excited about just the possibility of uploading my own stuff and perhaps have it go viral. I've made some videos that are, um, was a series that was called The Daily Phone Call, and uh, I kind of imitated some scam phone calls, and. Like I, I played around with the editing program and, you know, like somebody was calling me and I was having a hell of a time. I even managed to uh, animate some pictures and stuff. And yeah, it, it was just uh, like today they would be considered shorts, but they're in the different format. But yeah. they're all like a minute or maybe two minutes max. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. I was just having fun. Yeah. And still, uh, YouTube is where I learned a lot of things. and. Well, the idea was to give back some of my stuff, you know, that my uh, my own ideas and that, and yeah, it's just exciting. I like YouTube. It's 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 a, become a passion. Yeah, I, I agree. I I agree. And again, with like the uh, the bike tours, it's addictive. Yeah, <laughs> it becomes addicting, <laughs> oh, like totally. the tattoos and so many other things that are addictive. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good addiction. That's that's one thing. So that's awesome. Um, so, you have anything else for me, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in Canada, when I mention to people that even Barbara and I, we go to Mexico and do extensive bike tours. Last year we were here and uh, we cycled Yucatan for about two months. What I keep hearing constantly is that Mexico is dangerous. Oh, didn't you have any problems? And. I would like your perspective on that. What do you tell people when they tell you how dangerous Mexico is? Well, you know, it's funny you ask that because just the other day we were walking the dog and George was actually with us and we were telling this lady we plan on moving to Veracruz and she said, oh, you're you're brave. Yeah. And my first impression was, was, no, we're not brave. We're just, <laughs> just have common sense, that's all, you know, and uh, we're not... We're not partiers. I believe, this is my opinion, I believe, if you're not a drug addict, you're not a partier, you know, you're not out there breaking the law, doing illegal activities, the chances are you're going to lead a pretty safe life here in Mexico. And you got to remember, there's thousands of, of expats and, you know, foreigners that live here, immigrants that live here, full-time and part-time, and with no issues whatsoever, none. And then not to mention the millions of Mexicans that live here with no problems, no issues, ever. And I believe that uh, most people here are just honest, hardworking people. You know, they want a uh, good life for their family, their children, for themselves, and, you know. So I, I believe Mexico is overall a very, very safe country. We've never had anything stolen here, and back home in Canada, I've had stuff stolen, you know. I believe it's pretty safe here, I really do. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what I, that's pretty much what I tell people, if you're not, into legal activities, then chances are you're going to be pretty fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you go looking for trouble, you'll find it Just exactly anywhere. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, some of you guys know I've had something really big stolen in Edmonton where I never expected. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but yeah, that's life. So, what are some of the challenges you have uh, making your YouTube videos in Canada versus me 
in Mexico because it seems I can have a lot of content here you know the beach and, and traveling around and back home I just think what content do you have the snow <laughs> <laughs> well as you know I like outdoor I, yeah. I like creating outdoor content and in the winter time that's very challenging I mean most cameras they are designed for like zero degrees Celsius which is 32 Fahrenheit up to 40 degrees or so and uh, they'll work when it's cold outside when it's minus 20 but don't be surprised if in the middle of what what you're trying to capture the battery dies and yeah. the camera shuts down <laughs> another thing that I have a challenge is that uh, it took me forever to be able to talk to the camera naturally like I would to a person and that is still challenging to this point sometimes because I have to be in the right mindset and this has nothing to do with the location you know sometimes you have an idea for a video, but the moment you turn on the camera, you already, and, and that's probably being distracted at home. You know, there's other things that creeps into your mind, and then uh, you know, the whole train of thought is sidetracked, and the video just doesn't turn out the way you thought it would. Yeah, I can I relate. You can relate to that, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, that's awesome, my friend. That's uh, good information for sure for uh, anybody who does YouTube videos. It's every day is not uh, peaches and cream, so to say. <laughs> so your channel name says two gringos on the Gulf, but your your channel covers more than just this area, right? You have videos that are from other parts of Mexico, and I think you have some plans too about uh, the f for the future of your channel. Yeah, uh, Jennifer and I want to travel around quite a bit more here in Mexico we've already done a fair bit of traveling I said we've been to you know Holbox, El Culio, you know Bacalar, Mahuel, gone to San Cristobal now and you know I did a little uh, week excursion with my good friend uh, Jorge to Mexico City to visit his father which we will be going back to Mexico City at some point you can count on that because I really loved it there and Jennifer never got to experience Mexico City so our plan is now actually our lease is up here in April and we're going to be moving from here and we're going to work our way across uh, Mexico eventually to the west side of Mexico in uh, south of Oaxaca on the coast over there for a while but we're going to be stopping in Veracruz for sure for I don't know how long yet it's undecided but for sure Mexico City area for one year and then from there we're going to carry on to uh, south, southern Oaxaca to the coastline. That's kind of the plan. That's and then we're exciting. Yeah. I'm almost jealous. But <laughs> guys, if you're interested in Mexico and maybe thinking about moving to Mexico or you don't know where you would want to live and stuff, I think Daryl and Jennifer's channel is the one you need to follow. So I'll put a card up here for you to click on and go check it out. It's awesome. Now, Daryl, what do you do with all your winter gear? Did, did you sell it on eBay or like, <laughs> do you still have it somewhere? No, you know what? And I, after the trip to Mexico City and, uh, and uh, to jo or Jessica's family there in San Cristobal, I wished I would have kept some of it. Luckily, I ended up buying a hoodie, actually. But all of our stuff we sold when we left Canada. Me and Jennifer sold absolutely everything we owned. I, yeah, I did bring, uh, I think, one or two hoodies, and that was it. And Jennifer really didn't want me to even bring that, but <laughs> after going to uh, Mexico City and San Cristobal, I'm glad I did bring them. But, yeah, I have no winter boots, that's for sure. Uh, this is this is my uh, my attire now. That's it, flip-flops <laughs> and tank tops. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah. Anyway, but well, you're here now for a uh, month. Here I mean. now, yeah, for a month, and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll be back in in Mexico and probably other parts of Latin America because we both love it here, Barbara and I, and well, glad to have met you. So yes, me too, my you friend. I'm glad <laughs> glad to have met you. Some other occasions your... uh, yeah. down the road. Who knows? Right? Absolutely, absolutely, you know, for get sure. Get you some panniers for your bikes and. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have one more question for you, my friend. Uh, do you guys ever plan on moving to Mexico? And if so, where would you move to in Mexico and why? And if you're not going to move to Mexico, what are your guys' plans like in the future? 
Hey. Well, we haven't really talked about moving to Mexico. But I shouldn't say that. We, we have, but we're not at that point. Our thing right now is that we would like to explore different areas of the world. And when I first learned Spanish, I did it because this opens up the doors to so many Latin American countries. You know, there's Mexico is only the beginning. There's Guatemala, there's like El Salvador. You go further south. We've been to Colombia already. And we're at the point where whenever possible, we'd like to travel to different places during the winter. And we're not like financially at the point where we can just quit and or rely on YouTube to uh, to pay us and uh, live at a certain place. Like Edmonton, for, for us right now, it still is a place where uh, it's easiest to make a good income for yeah. both of us. That may change in the near future, and we're also getting older, so uh, I think moving to Mexico in the future, it's very, very tempting, and perhaps we'll, we'll do that at some point. Yeah, and we... Uh, We've been to Veracruz, both Barbara and I, and we liked it there a lot. And we probably would have traveled there more, but the connections from Canada aren't that great because yeah. it's a small airport, and yeah. then uh, you know you find yourself on the road or or taking another flight and stuff. And with bicycles, that's always a little bit of a pain. So yeah. you know, we usually ended up in Cancun for that reason. But, yeah. You know. Yeah, and then. Yeah, I get that for sure. But then now they have the the Mayan train that they're building, so yeah, you know that's yeah, going to open up a lot of a lot of Mexico. Awesome. Yeah, for a lot of people, right? So, and uh, George says he's jealous of us. Well, I'm jealous of him a little bit because he speaks really good Spanish. So, uh, George speaks four languages. Yeah, he speaks four. four languages. So I'm pretty jealous about that. I'll tell you guys. <laughs> well, it just came about traveling, and you're on the right track. I mean. The thing uh, for me, the key to learning a language is not the books or the, uh, taking a course. It is actually going out in public by yourself when uh, the only language that is spoken around you is the language you're, tra you're trying to learn. And uh, that's how it happened to me. And I tell you, there were some tough moments and some embarrassing moments, but uh, take it with a grain of salt, laugh about it, have a good time, you know. Yeah. And, Eventually, you'll get there. You know what I hear when you say that, George? So if I'm going to just come to Mexico and hang around with gringos <laughs> and only talk to gringos, chances are I'm not going to learn Spanish too well. So maybe I'll try to make some more well, Spanish-speaking friends. <laughs> you've, you've got Jorge and uh, Yeah, and yeah, Jessica exactly. And, you know, there, there are lots of good people down here that uh, don't speak English. And, you know, it doesn't all have to happen in a day. No, know, that's for sure. Anyway, my friend, I think we've uh, wasted yeah. enough time for these beautiful <laughs> people here on YouTube. So I want to thank you again for being here. And guys, yeah. I'm going to put a link for uh, George's channel in the description. I'm not as fancy as him, so I'm just going to drop a link in the description. <laughs> Be sure to check it out. He's got some interesting videos. He's got a really cool video how he repaired his uh, DJI drone. So if you have a DJI drone, you definitely got to check that out. It's got 21,000 hits already, so <laughs> be sure to check it out, guys. My advice, don't crash it in the first place. Yeah. But if you do, <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> Thanks for watching, right. guys. Thanks. Adios. Peace out. God bless everybody out there, and peace on Earth.